All right, so what we have here is the map, which is not mounted for an infamous traffic. And so to set up, um, you're going to have these little police forces and you're going to place one of these in re this uh, far region over here, region uh, D. You're gonna place one of these in region A. You are going to take one of these uh, bureaucrats, a level one bureaucrat, as noted by the uh, level one on his uh, token there. And you're going to place him in region A. You're going to take another level one bureaucrat and place it also in region A. You're going to take a missionary and place that in region A. Uh, this bureaucrat here is going to go in Region D, so over here, and then this bureaucrat is also going to go in Region D, and they have little markers on the map to show you where these things go. And you're going to take this um, smuggler, I guess it is, and you're going to place him in this part of Region A. Each of these um, areas these little paths are chain supplies that you are trying to get your opium into China. This is China. It has four coastal regions, uh, region A, B, C, and D. And then you have E, F, G, H, which are land interior regions that you are going to be trying to, um, if you want, uh, work in your opium into that area. The uh, Qing forces represents the police forces and that's what these tokens are here. There are two of them. There's one in region A and there's one that I placed over here in region D. So since there's two forces out there, this is going to go on the Qing police force track at a level two. You are given an outrage marker. How angry are the people? Uh, that is gonna go at zero. They are currently not very angry. You have a turn marker that's gonna go up on the turn track up here. And you have the start player marker, which is going to be given to whoever you choose to be the start player. And you can decide if you want to go counterclockwise or clockwise uh, based on which way the arrows point. And that will be changing throughout the game if somebody wants it to change. Additionally, you have a dice pool that represents the demand of a region. So you're going to roll two dice. And... You're going to put those in region A. So there's a 10 value demand in region A. You're going to take the rest of the dice and you will just roll them. And then those will go up in your dice pool at the top of the board. So up there, there's going to be a one, a two, a three, a four, a five, and a six, two fives, two threes. All right, so that is going to be beneficial to the smugglers, and I'll explain that later. So these will all go up into the dice pull up at the top of the board. So what I think I will do is kind of go over all the little tokens of the game and explain what the tokens are and what they do. All right, so the first tokens I want to mention are these prize tokens here. These are also put out during setup. You don't know what you're going to get. They range from a value of negative one up to three. And these are going to be turned upside down and you would just take them and you would shuffle them all up. And then what would happen is you would choose a certain number based on player. So if I was playing a three player game, I would just choose two of these. You would not look at them. These ones would be set off to the side. And then on the player board, there's a prize section and you are going to be placing the prizes up in the prize section and you'll have an opportunity to look at one of those um, two areas. There's also a, a section up here that you need to set up but I'll get into that a little later. All right so those are going to get set off to the side. Additionally each player is going to get a player board and it's going to have an investment track and a revenue track. All right you're going to be given two cubes to track this, so um, I know there's some glare, but this one would go on a zero spot, and this one would go on a zero spot also, like that. Um, and that's how your company would start off. This top part here where it says holdings, this represents investments you have made. 
uh, special envoys are uh, kind of like special abilities certain of your um, employees of your company can do. Um, and so let me kind of go over those tokens. So the other player tokens, each player is going to get a number of different tokens. So one of those types of tokens is your opium token. If you're going to try and sell opium by putting this onto the map, you're going to try to either sell, not sell opium, but essentially prevent somebody else from um, maybe making money in that area, or you're gonna have a level one opium, a level two opium, or a level three opium, and I'll explain more about that later. You're going to have kind of like a, oh, and on the opium uh, token, there's a little one in this box down here, and that one um, represents what it costs to invest in opium. It's gonna cost you one investment, so, if I was starting off with my cube on the zero track and I wanted to invest in opium, I would move it up to the one because I took one investment action and I would be investing in opium and I would put that up at the top of my holdings area. More on that later. You have these um, merchants that you, could, that you can try and send into China as well. There is no investment action to create a merchant. And you can try and get these into different supply chains at a level 0, 1, or 2. So if I wanted to put a merchant into my holding, I could just put them up there. There is no investment cost to do that. However, I could make him a special envoy and put him on this part of my board, which would provide a special ability, and that would cost one investment to do that. More on that later. Everybody also can invest in shipping. If you want to invest, it is also one investment action to do that, and you can invest in a level one, two, or three level shipping. Uh, the investment is one regardless of which type of shipping you use, one, two, or three. And if I chose to invest in shipping, like everything else, it would just go at the top of my board as part of my holdings. Those are your main tokens you'll be placing into the board area. At the end of a round, when you choose to pass, if you want, you'll have this uh, scion, which essentially will allow you to get one of those prizes that I put out here. Um, you may want to put a scion out there to get a prize. You may not. The prizes are victory points. But as you saw earlier, the victory points range from negative 1 to 0, 1, 2, or 3. So if you know you might be getting a negative 1 victory point, maybe you don't want to put a scion out there. I'll explain more of that later. But your scions have a value of 0, 1, 2, or 3, or a notable scion with a value of 4, 5, 6, or 7, or greater. I'll explain more about the scions later. If you are the only person who has an investment, if I was the opium dealer, and I had either I was the only opium dealer, or I uh, had more opium invested in my holdings and out on the board than anyone else, I could be the opium leader. And this token would be placed on the board. I'll show you where that goes later. But essentially, if I am the opium leader at the end of the game, I get two points. Additionally, nobody can undersell me. I'll talk about more about underselling later. I could be the merchant leader if I have more of my uh, merchants out there, this one, than anyone else. At the end of the game, I will get two points. And likewise, with shipping, if I am the shipping leader at the end of the game, I will get two points. That is your company. You have, uh, I think you have like five different merchants, five different uh, ships, and five different opium crates that you can choose to invest into your company, put them into your holdings, and then move them out to the board. Uh, more on that later. All right, so here are the other tokens you need to know about in the game. These tokens are going to be draw, drawn randomly and placed in these little circles up here. Essentially, you have more of these uh, smugglers. I showed you earlier I placed one out on the board. Uh, smugglers range from a value 0, 1, or 2. Smugglers help you complete supply chains, uh, but they also can restrict the amount of supply you're profiting from based on how strong they are. If you have a strong 
uh, smuggler out on the in your supply chain, it's going to be a chance to reduce your income, which you wouldn't want. But you may need them to be able to get any income whatsoever. So those are the smugglers. If you put them out into the region, you're going to be allowed to take one of the die from the die pool. You're going to get to roll it and whatever the number is that comes up, you get to place that into the region and it's going to create more demand. So if I had placed this smuggler in this supply chain right here, I could roll this die and now there is four more demand um, for this person, this region. Um, likewise, there are the missionaries. You saw me put a missionary out in to region A. If you put a missionary into another region, they also increase the demand for opium. So this would go in the specified religion box. I would take a die from the die pool, I would roll it, and this would have created six more demand for opium. You want a lot of demand, potentially, uh, so that you could get the most profit off of um, a supply chain. These police forces, uh, if you take them from the circle area, which is pretty much the only area you get them from, you're going to put them into your holdings area of your player board, as I was mentioning that area earlier. If there is ever a um, revolution or riot or what have you, um, the person who has the most of these is going to be able to uh, take some advantages, do some special things that they want to do. One of those things could be opening up a port, which makes it easier to gain access to dealing opium into China. We'll talk more about that later. Uh, up there you have these merchants ranging from 0, 1, 2, or 3, like the um, smugglers. They can be placed into a supply chain to help complete the supply chain so that once the supply chain is complete, you can make profit because you can never make profit unless the supply chain is complete. Again, the more value they have means probably the less profit you're going to be able to make, but you might use them high values for other reasons. And lastly, you have the police forces or the police. Uh, if you play, place one of these or you get one of these from the circle, you're going to place it into a region and that's going to increase that let me drag this over here. That's going to increase the um, police track up more or less. Why would you want to do that? Well, it depends, but if the outrage, I know if it exceeds, I think if it's equal, it's fine. I'd have to check the rules, but if the outrage, definitely if it exceeds the amount of police forces, you're going to have a revolution. That's where those British flag tokens come in handy. Um, so if it was like this, but then I placed this police force out into this region, it would increase the police forces and that would help keep the outrage down. Um, additionally, so you have three different types of police forces. You have this regular one here, all right, that just increases the track, the amount of uh, police presence to keep the outrage down on the track. You have the one with the P on it, which is a police action that it takes. What happens is if you place a police action uh, token in the area. Let's say this area was like this. All right, if I were to place a police action token in an area, then I have to remove one of the uh, black tokens. I could either move, remove the missionary or I could remove the smuggler. On top of that, if there is a die in the region and I remove the missionary or I remove the smuggler, all right, that demand is going to go away. Now, if the, there's more than one, if it was like this, I would take the lowest value die and remove it. All right, I wouldn't take the highest one, I'd take the lowest one. So a police action, when you put it in a region, it allows you to remove one of the black tokens and reduce the demand. Why would you want to do that? Well, maybe you're not profiting from that region, but others are, and so you want to uh, change that. If you had a completed supply chain, let's say you had uh, something like, where are my other tokens? 
this, this, uh, let's put in this guy here, and let's see, one, two, three, four. All right, let's say I had this supply chain here. All right, that's a, you can look at the top of value. All right, you have a value two plus a value one is three, plus two is five, plus one is six. There is a six uh, value supply chain. Here is this six value diamond, diamond die. All right, and here's another two one. So there's eight uh, desired opium selling ability. There's a desire for eight value of opium trade. Here is six of it being completed. Uh, if I completed this, I would remove a die. Well, let's say there was a third die here and it got removed. All right, so this, uh, this supply chain is in action and somebody places the police force here. If they removed this black token, they would also remove the lowest value die, but it would break this supply chain and all of the players' tokens would go back to their holdings that they have uh, being removed from the region. So by placing a police force, you can reduce value, and if there's a completed supply chain, you can break that supply chain, which you might want to do to cut off the income somebody else makes. Additionally, there's one of these tokens. This is like Super Cop, and he has two police actions. So in my previous example, that I had. If I were to place this person in here, the super cop into the region, I would carry out two police actions. So number one, I could uh, break the supply chain. So maybe I take this away from there. It breaks the supply chain and I have to take away the two die, leaving a demand of six. But because he carries out two police actions, I could also take away the missionary token and then I would have to take away another die. And so it basically just kind of bankrupted this area. By placing him out on the region, I would also incre increase the police track because he is functions as one of the police type tokens.